This problem is a classic in that we're being asked to calculate the elastic modulus once given a plot for a material tensile test. And the plot doesn't show us the force dis versus displacement, which is what the machine really is measuring, but it shows us the force divided by cross-sectional area for stress on the y-axis versus the displacement at the end of the tensile test specimen divided by the initial length. So we have it starting at 0, 0 when there's no displacement applied, there's no force uh, being measured, and going up to 2% strain with a stress of 4,000 megapascals, after which it becomes perfectly plastic, as you see here with this horizontal line. In the linear regime, we can calculate the elastic modulus by using Hooke's law. Sigma is equal to E epsilon, E is equal to sigma over epsilon. And from a practical perspective, sigma over epsilon means that we're interested in calculating the slope of this line. To calculate the slope, we want to find a couple of points because we need to figure out a rise and we need to figure out a run. So we can look at what might be considered the yield strength of the material where it goes from elastic to plastic. This is a good choice in many cases as long as the elastic regime really looks linear. And so we write down 2% comma 4,000 megapascals. Another point, which we often select, is the origin, assuming, of course, that there's zero strain when there is zero uh, stress. So to calculate the rise of run using these two points, we can say 4,000 megapascals minus zero megapascals all over the 2% over here minus the 0%. We can also use another point. So here we find that at 1% strain, there's a stress of 2,000 megapascals. So if we were to use this point instead with the origin, we could write out that 2,000 megapascals minus 0 megapascals over 1% minus 0% would be the same value for the elastic modulus. And yet, Another way to run this calculation would be to use these two points, where we have 4,000 megapascals minus 2,000 megapascals all over the 2% minus the 1%. So let's go ahead and calculate out this numeric value. We can go to Google again and write in 4,000 megapascals divided by 2%. Okay. And we see that that's a big number. That's a lot of zeros. Um, and if I say in gigapascals, then it tells us it's 200 gigapascals. So there's a good chance that this material might be steel or a steel because the elastic modulus of steel is typically around this value. Uh, you know, we need to do, we should be careful, right, that we use parentheses appropriately when we do these calculations. So if I were to do 4,000 minus 2,000 megapascals, make sure that I've got parentheses around both, and we'll say minus 1%, make sure I have parentheses around both, and I get the same value. If we want to do this using Google Colab, we can go ahead and create a new IPython notebook as we see there and uh, control enter and let's go ahead and make some more code defining well what do we want to define it, it it's maybe a little bit ambiguous but we could be a little bit slick or not that slick we'll say sy that would be the yield strength and 4000 megapascals but i don't really want a megapascal so i'm going to do times 1e to the 6 and we'll say that's now in pascals. Um, we can say strain, okay, or it's really like the yield strain. And we can say 2%, but that's not really what we want. We can say 2 times, uh, or 2e two e minus 2, like that. And that's going to be percent, and it's 
as you can imagine, oh, that's not really percent, that's just dimensionless strain, really. So uh, we can just type that in. And we can say that the E is going to be the SY divided by strain, like that. And uh, we'll go ahead and print E equals MP round of E. And we'll multiply by 1 e to the minus 9 and round 1. Oops, and it's, you can't even see. All right, there we go. Uh, and then this will give us in the unit of final answer in gigapascals, like that. And once again, we see it's 200 gigapascals. Thank you. I hope you found this information helpful.